<laughs> Hi you. Before enjoying this video, please lay a little love on that subscribe button. I'll be extremely grateful to you. Enjoy. Yeah, I'll be right out. Yeah, I'm just gonna go take a quick water break. I'll be out before the next year. Don't worry. <laughs> I know the schedule. I'll be, I'll be right on time. Just a quick break. Hi. <laughs> it's good to see you too. Just excuse me. Just one second. Excuse me. I will see you after the game. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, we've been working really, really hard. I appreciate that. Thanks. Excuse me. Excuse me, um, have you? Hi, no, it's good to see you too. Have you seen my brother? You haven't seen him. Okay, thank you so much. I'm just go, gonna go take a water break. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you after the game. All of you. I mean, thank you. You're very sweet. They haven't seen him. Of course, of course not. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to scare you. Um, you scared me. We're both like, creeping around under these bleachers. It'd be a little, it'd be a little less creepy though if I could, could see. You a bit better if you don't mind um, just stepping into more of the light. Are you? Oh. Oh, I know you. <laughs> yeah, I do know you. You know my brother. <laughs> so obviously, you're not enjoying the game. Um, we are losing pretty brutally, so. <laughs> You'd have to have a pretty strong investment to <laughs> to stay locked in on the play by players. Of course, you know I'm out there <laughs> cheering them on. So just consider me um, just consider me your cheat guide summary. If it's too hard to watch, I will gladly <laughs> sprint back and forth and report to you um, <laughs> the lowdown. I. I guess the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, I was, um, I probably should hydrate. Um, I was, I was looking for my brother. But you probably would have come with him if he was here. He's not here, is he? No, it's not, no, <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a brutal game, you know? I mean, I'm just a little emotional because, you know, those are my friends out there and they all worked really hard and, you know, my squad also worked really hard. We all worked hard together and that's all. Just just loser team blues. Is... Of course, you know, we lost a million times. <laughs> No, that couldn't possibly be what's so upsetting to me. I, I just feel like it was sort of, maybe it's just like a straw that broke the camel's back a little bit. It just feels like it just feels like a bad day. It's just a bad day. That's all. There were a couple highlights today. You know, I love being out there. Oh my god, I love. It is so scary. <laughs> being a flyer so the flyers are the cheerleaders that get thrown two stories high and have to trust their teammates to catch them and you know i've very quickly become an adrenaline ju adrenaline junkie however you know i don't know how well that's gonna fare for me for the rest of my life but i love it i love the excitement i love the athletic 
demands. I love dancing and thank God I love my squad, you know. <sighs> I mean, when you trust people with your life <laughs> to catch you when you fall from, you know, what's considerably a two-story building. <laughs> That's really special. So I am grateful. I'm really grateful for a lot. And it's cool that people appreciate what we do. And, you know, I think... I think we're breaking a lot of stigmas lately. And I'm grateful for that as far as... Yeah, well, that's the disappointment, I think, of my brother not being here. Is I feel like my brother sort of sees the world in cartoons. So, you know, I go to everything he ever does. I support all of his extracurriculars, his activities, all of it. If, I, if people, if there's a public showing of whatever he is doing, I am there. He's never, he's never been to a single. He's never been supported. Not once. And you know, I think I think it's because he, he sees he kind of sees the world in cartoons. So I think when I joined the squad, he just like stopped seeing me as a person that he knows, you know, his sister who cheers now. He sees me as a cheerleader. What is a cheerleader? Well, <laughs> logically speaking, it's a person who does cheerleading. Um, it could be anyone, um, of any personality traits, but you know, I think he is just so heavily influenced by fictional media i think suddenly he disrespects me because he feels like all of a sudden like i put on the uniform and i transformed into you know either a bimbo or a mean girl just a, like a jerk or i was suddenly i'm superficial to him you know just like slap on any stereotype And I think that's what makes it awkward when people, when people do appreciate the sport now, like, it's, it is nice, but on the other hand, it's like the one person in the world that I, you know, it's not to say I don't appreciate people's acknowledgement, you know, what we do. I mean, my God, they better appreciate it. I'm doing backflips every day. <laughs> oh my God, that was the scariest thing I ever had to learn was a backflip. <gasps> like, oh, especially, it's like decent when you're on the mat, but my God, when you get into that field or like, you know, hard ground, <gasps> everything in you. <laughs> yeah. It's like all of your fear instincts to keep you alive, fire. And, you know, I have a lot to be proud of out here. And oh my gosh, I was, I was so socially awkward before I joined the team too, you know, it's, and I'm lucky. I'm really, really lucky that the people I've been, the people that I've been training with and performing with, I'm really fortunate that they're great. Most of them are great. You know, every group of people may have, generally will have, sometimes not, but generally will have, you know, a couple bad apples, but. You know, for the most part, it's been, uh, my God, the fact that, sh I think what I'm trying to say is the fact that strangers or like parents of people I hardly know or you <laughs> can appreciate, you know, the, the teamwork and the athleticism and the trust and the risks, you know, I'm being thrown up and down and trusting these people. I'm, I'm doing backflips or I'm, I'm learning choreography quickly and doing dance routines and, and we're training really hard and we're lifting and running and and on display, you know, it's, it, it's really great to finally start becoming comfortable being the center of attention and I'm learning how to respect myself and stand up for myself. And, and it's been cool too to see, you know, not just, you know, understanding my friends on the squad and appreciating what they've done for years, you know, because when I first jumped on board like I realized wow I didn't give any of the seniors <laughs> nearly enough credit but to see you know all my friends out on the field to be more up close and personal to all of these athletics like I feel like it's been a really beautiful experience and and growth and learning to appreciate other people and understanding that we only ever see the tip of the iceberg on anybody's achievements 
you know, it's been a really great learning. This has all been a really great learning experience for me, and I love it. And I just hate the fact that strangers can appreciate that, and my brother can't. That's, you know, it, I just really wish, I just really wish, I just really wish that any validation from everybody else or anybody else, I wish it was like a quantity thing. I wish it was a matter of, okay, well, my brother doesn't respect me, but all these other people do, and that would outweigh it. But that's, and I wish I didn't care, but I love my brother. And it's, you know, I don't want to, I don't ever want to act out of vengeance, you know, like, you know, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm beginning to feel like this relationship's become very one-sided, it becomes, it's become very parasitic as far as support and respect. And so, yeah, on one hand, I could just stop supporting him, but on the other hand, that doesn't feel true to me. Like, I want to be able to support my brother. God, if I could cry off this makeup, my coach is going to kill me. You know, the girls would be cool, but like my coach, pff, the coaches are a whole other different story for another time. Pros and cons. <laughs> this one in particular, controversial. <laughs> yeah, and I know nobody would be able to tell from the bleachers, but I'm telling you, my coach is just such a perfectionist. Oy, it wouldn't get me out of trouble. Just because everybody's far away. I know, it's, it's, <laughs> I told you. It's not perfect, but for the most part, this has all been really great. Like I said, it's just, I think it's just hard when, when like someone you love just isn't, doesn't care to listen. You know, I feel like if you would just listen for like a minute, you could understand, but you know, somehow, somehow this other narrative is serving him better. Somehow, somehow this narrative of his to disrespect my cheerleading is, makes him feel better than it would make him feel to support me somehow. You know, it's, I think he wants, you know, oftentimes I feel like when people get really stuck on, you know, doubling down on some sort of like generic stereotyping of people, I'm like, well, I think you want to believe. You think you, he's choosing to believe that what I'm doing is, is acceptably disrespected. I think somehow, I mean, I, I don't know because he, he won't talk to me about it, but I don't know, maybe he wanted to be a cheerleader and felt like, you know, lacked the confidence in pursuing it himself, or maybe he wanted to befriend or even date some cheerleaders and it didn't go well, so like, it's just excuses. Like, excuses are, well, that full group of people <laughs> are nothing like me, you know? I think, like, stereotypical narratives can be really great outs you know, and wrecking and taking on your own responsibility, you know, and understanding, okay. <laughs> like, a, maybe life is just more complicated <laughs> than I would like for it to be. Um, you know, maybe you need to get to know individuals, <laughs> which takes more time and effort, but it's going to be far more accurate than trying to just guess people's personalities given arbitrary traits. <sighs> and on the other hand, I think... Yeah, I think. Well, anyhow, I, just, I, I, I fear to say anything else because it, I don't want to accidentally trash talk my brother. Because I do love him. And I'm hoping that he'll grow out of this. You know, I'm hoping that eventually he'll come to realize that it's important to support me. I don't know. It's just scary because I. I I'm scared of how this will play out in our future, you know, as kids. I, I was so family oriented and I have been, I've been so committed to this idea of 
you know, a close family unit because the idea of a close family unit is really extraordinary. The idea of having essentially a team of people who have each other's backs and support each other, the idea of that is exceptional. But I'm just scared that this is the beginning of the end for that possibility. You know, what's even more frustrating is there's nothing I can do. I'm doing everything I can. You know, but this isn't going to work if he doesn't you know reciprocate these levels of respect and and appreciation and just like if it doesn't occur to him the importance of supporting his sister but it occurs to his sister the importance of supporting him like this is this isn't gonna be sustainable You know, I don't like the idea of needing to, like, not be close to my brother, but right now being close to my brother just hurts. I don't know, maybe I need to take some sort of, like, good sister break of some sort, you know? Maybe just for a little while, maybe just for a little while, don't be as big a part of his life. But, again, I just... It's hard when... It's hard when you know, when I know, that if, you know, our relationship did pan out to be superficial at best, I know that he would, like, wish we were closer, but if he's not going to take responsibility for why, it's just tragic, you know, because I know that he's going to wish we were closer, and I know that I'm certainly going to wish that we were closer, but there's nothing more that I can do. And if he's not going to accept responsibility for that, I don't, he's just going to think, you know, he's going to just pick. He's just going to choose his own narrative adventure. You know, it's either going to be evil cheerleaders changed me. Or, <laughs> or, oh, I guess we just don't have anything in common anymore. You know, he'll just he'll pick something and it won't help, you know. Unless he addresses the reality of the fact that I support him and he doesn't support me, like, then it's, we're just, we're doomed and... On one hand, I feel like there would be a huge relief in accepting that. But on the other hand, like, I don't want to give up. But on the other hand, there's nothing. It's, this is all in it at this point. Give up what? Like, I'm doing everything I can. Anyway, I'm talking in circles now. I'm sorry. And I don't mean to make this awkward for you. And I hope I haven't, I hope I haven't talked trash. I'm just trying to explain a situation. You know, again, I love my brother. I, don't, I wouldn't want any bad things for my brother. And I don't think he would, you know, I don't think he deserves anything bad to happen to him. I just, I just want him to show up. Sometimes that's all somebody needs to do is just show up. And to me, that feels like a bare minimum. But I guess to some people, it's harder. But even that being the case, you know, that doesn't mean that I should, you know, settle for feeling like... I should probably get back out there. I'm sorry. No, no, not about, not about sharing with you. Actually, um, I won't go as far as to say I feel better, <laughs> but I don't know. It just, it just feels good to connect. And seeing as you're hiding under the bleachers, I can imagine you too <laughs> are lurking alone for a reason so sometimes misery does love company yeah, well look um i'm not gonna be feeling particularly chatty after the game um but i'm not gonna want to go home either um especially after talking about all this so yeah i'm sure you probably have a lot of friends that would love to see you after the game but if you just wanted to go out and like, 
I think a cup of tea sounds really good. Um, I would love to listen. Um, catch me after the game and um, we'll exchange information. I was going to say you can always get my number from my brother, but <laughs> better to just cut the middleman, I think. Um, no, I'm just stalling at this point. I probably should go drink some water. It just feels nice to take a little break. You're, you're, um, you're really nice to talk to. You're a really good listener. That's really rare. Like, speaking of, um, <laughs> speaking of busting stereotypes, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> no, I'm, it's, it's not bad. I just, um, I don't want to embarrass you when I first saw who you were, but you know, I, I've, I've noticed for quite some time you've, you've, <laughs> you've showcased, you've showcased body language, um, shy body language <laughs> and, um, you know, I am just, I am a person who enjoys cheerleading. I'm just a person, flaws and all. So you got nothing to be intimidated by. The back lips, though, those are really cool. So be intimidated by that. <laughs> but as far as, as far as um, intimidation factors are concerned, there's... Believe me, other than the cool backflips, there's nothing intimidating about me. Um, well, I guess that's to be, it's to be decided, I suppose. <laughs> well, no, I remember thinking of it, and to be perfectly honest, I suppose I can be a little bit intimidating, but not, but not because I'm like a cool kid. <laughs> like, just because I think I'm all right. I think I'm kind of a cool person. <laughs> I suppose that can be intimidating, but I think you're kind of a cool person too. So, so what I'm trying to say is, um, perhaps we're both a little bit intimidating, um, which means we are, um, <laughs> period. <laughs> no, we're both intimidating people <laughs> hiding under the bleacher. See, this is what I'm talking about. Just because... <laughs> just because I can be a little intimidating in certain ways does not mean... Does not mean you are not to feel comfortable talking to me. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's nothing to be afraid of, okay? I would... Um, oh, shoot. Yeah, I really gotta... Sh oh, my... Okay, I gotta go. Um, Find me after... <laughs> seriously... Find me after the game. I will give you my info and we will pop into any, you know, fun <laughs> coffee house type place and, and chat. Okay, I gotta go. Um, thank you. Listen, um, I know I really do have to go. Okay, can I, um, is this a weird time or place for a hug? <laughs> oh, if it is, that's perfect. That is perfect <laughs> for me. Come here. God, my coach is gonna kill me. I hear the song starting. Oh, okay. Um, find me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of this. Um, okay, I'm on my way. <laughs> get out. Get out of these bleachers, though. Enjoy the game. Since I know it's it's miserable, but just try to. Okay. <laughs>